You are listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anklevich, and I'd like to welcome you to the no, the second worst, the second worst marathon ever. But who are we moving up in the world then? Second worst. Yeah. Well, we already hold claim to the worst marathon ever. So this oh. is yeah, just the second worst. Across the table from me is uh, Mr. Rich Outfield. Hi, I've got one of those chairs that's wobbling and making an awful noise. Okay, well, we'll try and ignore that. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, but before we get started, I need to know, is the Fallout Boy continuing in this episode, or is it done? Hopefully it's done. I would love it to be done. Okay. Uh, it's all up to you, I guess, if you think it's a gag worth carrying through. That might be what makes this the second worst marathon ever, is that that Fallout Boy song keeps coming up through the whole thing. Well, it may. Yes, the specter of Fallout Boy haunted them for the rest of the marathon. So this is still that gets my go, right? Yes. And I'm still Rich Outfield? Uh, yes. Okay, but... I am no longer Big Anklevich, though. I am now Fallout Boy. Light him up, 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 light him up, up. No, I'm actually just a radioactive man. You are Fallout Boy. <clears throat> Gee Willikers, radioactive man! What are we talking about today? Uh, we're going to be talking about, throughout this marathon, the 22 rules of storytelling that come to us via Pixar. Pixar Animation Studio. This is where the magic happens, folks. So before uh, we start on that, I wanted us to write down the names of all the Pixar movies so that we'd make sure we touched them on every single one of them. Okay. And it seems like it would be easiest for me just to type them right now so okay. I have it in front of us. Is that cool? Yes. Okay, so obviously number one, 1995, would be Tin Toy. <laughs> Toy Story was number one. Wally Two in the B. Um, that, that, was, that was when Lucas still ran that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Toy Story, then followed by Bugs Life, then followed by Toy Story 2, then followed by Monsters Incorporated, then followed by Finding Nemo. I'm typing number six right now. Keep going. Was that Finding Nemo? No, five was Finding Nemo. Oh, what was six? The Incredibles. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. The Incredibles, Cars... Ratatouille? Did that come after Cars? At a certain point, I start... That one's really hard to spell. ...to the lose way. the order. Wally? -E? Was that right after Ratatouille? I don't know. Up? I know it was right after Wally. -E, because they were still hitting on most cylinders. Toy Story 3? Was there anything between Up and Toy Story 3? Not unless it was Cars 2. I think Cars 2 was after Toy Story 3. Yeah, I think so too. Because Toy Story Was it immediately was... after Cars 2? It may have been. I remember Sorry, Toy, Toy Story, Story 3 hit and we were just like, oh, man, they, just, they can't miss. And then finally Cars 2 came along. It's like, ah. We'll, we'll talk about that. Cars 2 is not nearly as bad as people think. It's, yeah, it's not terrible. It's just... It, oh, sorry. Spoiler alerts, guys. There's not been a bad Pixar movie. It's just rather DreamWorks-esque is all. Um, so after Cars 2, did we get Brave? Probably. And after Brave, we had something called Monsters University? Or was it... Did I get it backwards? No, I'm pretty sure that was after Brave. And then, last, we got Inside Out. Is that all? As far as I know... Okay, what am I missing? Do you want me to run down the list quickly, or is there one that you just off the top of your head know we missed? I can't think of something that we've missed. Go ahead and run down and make sure. Okay, that one. Toy Story, Bugs Life, Toy Story 2, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, Incredibles, Cars, Ratatouille, misspelled, Wally, -E, Up, Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Brave, Monsters University, Inside Out. Good dinosaur, but we can't count good dinosaur. By the time... This, we'll, it no, will, it still hasn't come out when this. We'll episode. beat it before this airs, so we won't mention it. We could. We'll we could, beat it. What do you mean? This will this air before. Will air before yeah, sorry, okay. when I said before it airs, I was talking about the movie, which doesn't air, as it were. <laughs> before it hits theaters, this will hit 
podcast so fear. Okay, the that's this fear. All right. So so I've got fifteen on the list. Fifteen movies in exactly twenty years. Well, it'll be sixteen movies in twenty years this November when Toy Story came out, right? But yeah, fifteen movies in twenty years, right? Okay. No directed video sequels. Do you count Toy Story of Terror and the other Toy Story spinoff? Do those aren't? Are they? I, I wouldn't count those. I wouldn't count Cars tunes. I wouldn't count Mater's Tall Tales kind of. Right. Yeah. That, those are the Cars tunes. Oh. I wouldn't count any of the shorts. Oh, okay. That's I wouldn't shorts. count planes or planes search and rescue. Because they weren't made by Pixar, for which it may be in their world, but they didn't make it. So yeah, I would just take the main features, especially for the the purposes of their storytelling rules, because there's not a whole lot of the... I mean, you could follow, I'm sure, some of the rules in the shorts, but only so much of it. A lot of times the shorts seem to be experiments. Right. Well, let's try this. Let's try... Okay, Paper Man, for example. Let's try... Doing computer animation that looks like hand-drawn animation. Paper Man was Disney. Paper Man was not Pixar? Yeah. Oh, I guarantee you Paper Man was better than whatever Pixar put out that year. Yeah, that's true. Are you sure? It was Disney and not... It showed before Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, well... But, yes, they did a lot of that. And they, they developed a lot of their stuff, like hair looking right... Or whatever, by way of some of these little things. They're like, let's try to make, I don't know, real-looking water or something. And yeah, they would, they would sometimes throw that in in those shorts. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think a they don't just they just don't have enough time in a lot of them to follow those those rules that we're talking about. So we can't really be like, oh yeah, well, that one time in Bounden, they. Uh, Mountain was the one about fur, right? Where they developed fur? I don't know if they developed it for... I think they had fur down by Monsters Incorporated, I would say. So, probably not. What did Mountain appear on? Mountain, I want to say, came out with cars. I don't know. It was pretty late. Oh, okay. It was later on. Uh, Well, anyway, I'm sorry. I got us off track. So, explain briefly what these rules are. Because I think I thought that this was something that was given to every Pixar employee or was on the walls at Pixar Animation Studio of these are rules that will help you be a better storyteller or you know when a new animator comes on board he's like this is our mantra these are our 22 rules read them learn them live them I don't think that's what they are I think it was someone who worked at Pixar or works uh, at Pixar and they're just saying, okay, these are the things that I've learned over the years from working at Pixar. These are rules, you know, these are the things that the director will always ask that, you know, come back again and again. Or they'll be like, this is, you know, whatever. You know, I think they're they're just one person's compilation of, I worked at Pixar, this is what they taught me about storytelling. I don't think they're, a, you know, somebody crocheted them and they put them on one of those things on the wall or they made a cat poster with all of the, the those listed out that everybody has to look at all the time. Okay, well, see, I, then, then I'm wrong. And we never should have been doing these episodes. <laughs> I really did feel like this was something that they, but they pounded into people's heads and said, okay, hey, guys, let's look at rule number seven right here and see if maybe it gives us an yeah. angle as to how we can fix this problem we've got in the third act. When these rules came out, you know, people wrote up a post about them and where they came from, etc., but unfortunately, we are in a cabin in the woods, rated R, and are unable to access those posts to see the introduction that can tell us where these rules came from. So we're just going to have to say there was a cat poster that had all these rules on it that they would always look at and go from there. Okay, and one last caveat. You and I, as far as we're concerned, nobody does it film better than Pixar. Nobody does it better. You know, it, it makes me feel sad for the rest, really. Nobody does it quite like Pixar. Baby, they're the best. <laughs> they, okay, so we've got 15 
movies on this list. I don't think there's a single bad movie. There are a couple that I don't like nearly as much, but there are several great movies and several Oscar-winning movies, almost all of them hugely successful at the box office. And a lot of uh, factors can go into that. But the factor that most matters is that it reaches an audience, it speaks to them, it moves them so that they want to watch it again. That's the difference between a movie with a huge opening weekend and a movie that has legs. It's something that you want to watch again, that you tell your friends, let's watch that again. It's just like, I'm feeling randy, honey, let's watch Bugs Life again. (laughs) That would be really nice if a girl actually said that to me. Never happened. I'm sorry, that would be weird. (laughs) It would be weird. I nearly had an experience like that with Finding Nemo, but it ended badly. So... What a surprise. Yes. I, that was a twist I wasn't so expected. Out of what a twist. Character, except for just the fact that I nearly had a good experience with a girl on a couch is... Um, also a surprise. Yes. I mean, that's a surprise as well. Okay. So that I wanted to get that out of the way. I just... They, they know. They understand. They have priorities. And sometimes it's not in the marketing. Those same priorities and all that. So, but these people, whoever it is, if we want to say it's John Lasseter... And it trickles down. They have a knowledge of what will reach people. And they always try and hit it. Instead of just going the easy way out. And Or well, let's do some pop culture references. Or let's do a, a, a song at the end. Or whatever it might be. Let's just punch up the uh, roll of those penguins. Yeah. I know there are people that like that stuff. And you More and I... Minions going beep, 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 beep. We are, we are. There are people that like that stuff, but it, present company excludes. <laughs> yeah. There are DreamWorks movies that are good. I own a DreamWorks movie. What? Well, you should by now because they've made a hundred compared to the 15 that we've listed here for Pixar. If Pixar were DreamWorks... It wouldn't just be Toy Story that's made it to number three. Every one of those would be at number three or four, plus a spin-off movie, just with the just the three aliens. Yeah, that three. You know what I mean? Totally. I, I, we're on the same page. And when we first started doing the podcast, there were only six Pixar movies. Incredibles was the was the last one to come out, and and that might be wrong. Cars may have come out, but I don't know. And. we talked about, oh gosh, I hate it when people think that Ice Age is Pixar. Oh, I hate it. It used to, <laughs> it bothered you more than it bothered me. But now I think it's reversed. And I just, oh, I, I, when, when somebody says, well, what about Ants? Wasn't Ants before Toy Story? I was like, F you, Ants doesn't exist. And it's spelled with a Z. And no, it was not before Toy Story. So uh, there's, there's, there's that. Anyhow, we're going to try and keep our episodes short. So that we can do a lot of them. So right. this can be the second worst marathon ever <laughs> instead of the first. But I don't know how Pixar came to be as good as they are. I mean, Toy Story seems to be something of a miracle. That it was so great right out, out, out of the gate to rhyme. You've got a book about how Pixar came to be. And these Disney animators... You know, they were in their own company that was, wasn't really Disney. They didn't work for Disney. And they'd seen the success that Disney had with their, they were their Renaissance movies. You know, your Aladdin and Little Mermaid and Beauty and, the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. And there were some after that, but those are the three. And they said, well, we're going to try something different. We're going to do a different thing. And so when we're making this movie about, you know, the, the Toy Story a secret world of toys. Some, it was called something like that. We're not going to have a bad guy in any way. And we're not going to have a character who expresses what they want. And we're not going to do any songs. We, and, and there was a whole list. A list that Lasseter and the, the other collaborators had made of, of anti-Disney things that they were going to do. And I, I don't understand. Because Pocahontas wouldn't even have come out by this point. So there hadn't been any bad Disney Renaissance movies or anything. Not that Pocahontas is even bad. I'm just saying you couldn't have been sick of... The formula? Of the formula yet, but they said, we're going to break free from this formula. 
And so they, they wrote this up this script and, and it just wasn't working. And then if you watch like the Toy Story documentaries or whatever, you can see like little animatics from that where Woody was this nasty character. I, I mean, it's a mean spirited character. And Buzz was, you know, a Boy Scout, you know, and, and, and the nasty cowboy was always trying to get the Boy Scout thrown out or killed or, you know, something like that. And they're just like, gosh, I, I just don't know what it is. What we'll probably have to do is bring in a writer, a real writer, a writer of movies. And they brought in this young punk. This, this kid who had done, he'd worked on Roseanne and some fudge and vampire hunter show to, to write the script. And he said, oh, I read what you guys wrote. And what I think you really need is you need an antagonist. You need th- these two characters to be good guys, to be friends. And there's somebody else that's the bad guy. And you need right at the very beginning to get out what these characters want. Like like uh, expressing that they have a desire, that they have a need, that they have a... Anyway, he, he went out there. Joss Whedon came out and he's like, hey, we've got these three or four things that I think that you need. And they were all stuff on their list of things that we absolutely will not do because we're not Disney. So I don't know how... Like, I think he needs songs too. Why don't you get Randy Newman to put together some songs? I wouldn't have been surprised if that was part of it. I, I mean, it's been a while since I read that whole chapter on Toy Story. So, you know, it could have gone a totally different way than it did. But I remember seeing Toy Story and it was unlike anything I'd ever seen. Not visually, of course, because we'd never seen right. a feature length CG film and all that. But the characters and their lives and I mean, it, it was a kid's movie, but it didn't talk down to you at all. It felt like it was a movie for me, for the kid in me. I got one of the fast food restaurants had a promotion, you know, a Happy Meal type thing Uh where you could get a character from Toy Story and it wasn't a half-assed little two-inch piece of plastic like those things are now. It was an actual Woody made of cloth with a big Big plastic plastic head. But, you know... his hand-stitched polyvinyl (gasps) hat! Probably, yeah. I'm sure it was made by... Seven-year-old Indonesian children. But I got one of those. I went into McDonald's or Burger King or whatever it is and got the me or paid, you know, the buck 50 or whatever it was <laughs> so that I could get that. And I had it in my car and people, I had it hanging from the rearview mirror and people would always be, oh my gosh, try it. I love Woody or whatever. This was as a young man, as a college student type thing. Uh, so it spoke to people of my generation instead of just kids and all that stuff. It really resonated with me. And then I and I was a Pixar fan ever since. And we can talk about your experiences and all that in the next episode if you want to. But I just wanted to get out there. That's why we need, I feel, that it's worth dedicating a dozen episodes to dozen. Pixar. <laughs> and it might even be more, guys. So consider yourself warned. Light them up. But I, I think that's probably all the time we have for the first. Yeah, this. we're just. This is just going to be the introduction to what's what's coming your way. Uh, so yeah, we'll we'll let you go your way, and then we'll be back tomorrow with a whole nother eh, ten minutes. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we want to try and get them all done tonight, so we, they probably won't be as long as they could be. And I'm sure some of these rules will be like. I don't know what they're talking about, so I don't really have anything to say there. I hope so. Otherwise, it'll be sun up when we're still recording. Yeah, but it may well be anyway, so we'll, we'll see. Now, but, are we trying to get donations with this marathon? Or should I just say right now, if you guys want to donate to the show, it's right there. Yeah, I don't know that we have to make it a push or anything. Okay. I would like to get a new Zoom, though, since mine sucks. Yours sucks more than I do. <laughs> That was Freudian, wasn't it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks. I've been Rich Afian. And I'm Rich was. <laughs> At Gets My Coat is produced under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license.